So what we're going to be looking at today are the displacement equations in simple harmonic motion. Now there are two equations that were given in our formula booklet x is equal to a cosine omega t and x is equal to sine omega t. What we need to do is learn when to use which equation. So I've decided to illustrate this with an example. Let's say that we have a pendulum and we start our experiment at the maximum displacement. So in other words, uh, our balance point, let's say, is somewhere here and we have moved this pendulum a meter away from it. This will be the amplitude and then we release it at t is equal to zero. What's going to happen then is that this pendulum is going to start moving and it will be oscillating. It will be performing simple harmonic motion. Because we've started at t is equal to zero, we're going to be using the cosine function. The reason for that is because cosine actually has a maximum when, uh, when t is equal to zero. And you can see that in the graph of the cos function. So whenever our motion is at maximum at the start, we use x is equal to a cosine omega t. Now in this equation, it's really, really important, x is our displacement at time t. So let's just write that. So this over here is, a, is our displacement at time t. T. So it's not a constant, it will be constantly changing, it will be going from, in this case it will be going from 1 to minus 1 and um, it will be, be 0 at some point as well, etc. A is the amplitude of our motion, so this over here is our amplitude and that's in meters, that's in meters as well. Uh, you've got the cosine omega, here is the angular frequency, so angular frequency. This is not to be confused with the angular velocity, even if they're very, very, very similar um, in terms of both their units. They're, all, they're both given in radians per second, however, um, this is our angular frequency, very, very similar well, um, well, very similar equations as well. T over here is the time. Okay, now if we have exactly the same situation, however, we start our pendulum at, uh, or we give our pendulum a, a push when it's at the balance point. So let's say that at T is equal to zero, our pendulum is there. So we fixed our pendulum and it's at the balanced position. So let's just write at t is equal to zero. Pendulum is here and then it starts moving. Well then we're going to use the sine function. x is equal to a sine omega t. Um, this equation is very very similar to the one above. In fact it's just been shifted by 90 degrees. In this case, x is, is once again the displacement at time t, a is our amplitude, and omega is our angular frequency, t is the time. And we can see that we're going to use that because, well, sine of zero is zero, which uh, means that our motion, our displacement from the equilibrium point will be zero when, um, when the motion begins. Okay, folks, so just to summarize, if our motion starts at maximum displacement, i.e. the amplitude, then we're going to use the cosine equation. If at the start we're starting from the equilibrium point, we're going to use the sine equation. Now, let's just do one example. Okay, now let's have a look at an example question. We have a spring which is connected to a mass which oscillates with simple harmonic motion. The spring is initially extended 10 centimeters away from the equilibrium before being released. The student measures the frequency of those oscillations to be two hertz. Calculate the displacement five seconds after 
the release of the spring. Okay, now our first job will be to try and figure out which equation we're going to be using. Now, because the spring is initially extended to 10 centimeters, to 10 centimeters away before being released, then we're going to need to use the cosine equation because we are starting at our amplitude. So I'm just going to go ahead and write down this equation. So the equation is that our displacement is equal to a cosine, let's try it again, cosine omega t. Okay, now um, in this case, I know that my amplitude is 10 centimeters because this is uh, when uh, the spring is actually released it's not going to go any further than that so x will be 10 centimeters so it's going to be 10 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 2 like so multiplied by the cosine of omega t now omega is actually equal to 2 pi f. I'm not given the angular frequency, I'm given the um, the normal standard frequency in hertz. I'm just going to write over here on the side that omega is 2 pi f, and what I'm going to do is just substitute that in there. So it's going to be 2 pi times the frequency, which is 2 hertz, is going to be 2, and the whole thing I'm going to multiply by 5. Okay, now I'm going to input this into a scientific calculator, and this is really, really important. Now, in all of these equations, your calculator absolutely needs to be in radians mode. So I need to input 10 times 10 to the power of minus 2 multiplied by cosine of 2 pi multiplied by 2 times 5. This is really, really important. And this is going to give us a displacement of 1 over 10, which is equal to 0 0.1 meters. So actually, five seconds after the release of the spring, uh, the spring will be back at its amplitude. Okay, folks, so hopefully that makes sense. Just to summarize, we've chosen the cosine equation because we're starting at our amplitude. We've made sure that our calculator is in radians mode. We've substituted into the equation and we have gotten the correct answer. If there are any questions about this, feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing.